Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, the 25th of February. Today's special guest is Brad Spiritson for the topic Participate in Your Own PD. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And if you want to use the closed captioning, remember it's a little icon in the audio video panel. Click on that, you'll get a window with the text that's spoken. I'm now going to turn over the mic to Susie Higley, who's going to introduce Brad. Well, good morning. I'm so excited that we get to learn from Brad. Some of you may recall that we had him on for a session about a year ago, and I knew even then I had just begun to tap the many possibilities of Thanks from Participate. And as I've used it more and more in the last year, I've just realized how valuable it is, and so have others. So Participate has even changed some things, added some things. I think it's one of the best ways to get information from a Twitter chat, whether you're in it as it goes live or afterwards. It's a great place to get the many resources. So Brad, an interesting background that's led him to participate. He's the Director of Platform Innovation with Participate. He holds an MA in Communications and Media Ecology from NYU School of Education with a focus on the role of media and technology in early childhood education. He's based in Chicago. He's been an analyst who serves as a regular contributor to ABC News, TechCrunch, Huffington Post, NPR, and dozens of other broadcast, print, and new media outlets. So I'm so excited that we have this opportunity and that Brad is joining us today. And Brad, I think there's going to be a newbie question for you to answer, and then you can take it away from there. I'll go ahead and ask the question, Brad. What role do badges play in self-directed professional learning? Great. So uh, badges are a, uh, a wonderful way to to showcase not only not only course completion but professional learning in formal and informal environments. So um, think, think of a badge uh, after participating in a classroom QO live session or uh, an ed camp or a Twitter chat. I think, uh, I think badges have a, a, a wonderful way of, of documenting what we learn and, and showcasing uh, examples of using those lessons in our, in our own teaching. Wonderful. So, uh, I, I believe we're about to begin here. Uh, first off, thank you so much for uh, uh, welcoming me back uh, to Classroom 20 Live. Uh, it has been about a year, and uh, as we'll as we'll uh, get through this presentation, we'll we'll talk about some of the the changes uh, that we've made as an organization and uh, kind of the, the the depth of how we combine. Um, uh, collaboration tools and um, things that we talked about a year ago, like what we do with chats and uh, curating resources, discovering resources, and how that is now incorporated into a uh, more formal uh, educator uh, professional environment uh, settings. So uh, first off, uh, Participate is a 30-year-old company. So uh, real quick snapshot, a year ago uh, when I presented here, I uh, participate was a, a startup uh, organization uh, founded in Chicago, uh, and we helped invent a lot of the, the, the chat tools and curation tools that, that, I, that I'll showcase. Subsequently, uh, last May, we were uh, acquired by uh, a 30-year-old education company. Uh, previously known as uh, VIS uh, International Education, and uh, uh, our our history with VIS is uh, uh, global 
oriented, uh, a, a commitment to global education, uh, and uh, providing professional development uh, tools and training around those competencies. And so what we've done uh, since being acquired is uh, uh, bring, uh, bring this collaborative professional development approach to uh, not only global education, but uh, all types of educator, educator professional development. Uh, one other thing I'd like to note about BIF now participate is that we're a, a, a B corporation. So uh, what that means, that's a formal distinction where uh, while we are a for-profit company, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have a very social, civic mission and our, our corporate bylaws uh, really, really uh, cause us to, to value sustainability. Uh, corporate commitment, uh, partnerships, um, and, and so we, we think of our uh, customers or anyone who engages us with, uh, uh, as long-term partners, and that's uh, part of our uh, corporate ethic. So a little bit about collaborative professional development before I show you uh, some of the things that we do uh, at, at Participate, and you can find it at participate.com as I'm going through most of what I'm talking about is free and easy for anyone to join. Um, so, uh, you know, please uh, feel free now or, or, or throughout to, to go ahead and, and, and start participating. So the, the, the model, the philosophy, the approach we have for collaborative professional development is kind of like what you, what you see here where we think that, that the engaging in your own learning path uh, and coming up with uh, ways to uh, find resources, discover resources, learn how to collaborate with your peers and your professional learning community are skills unto itself that are um, professionally, professional development oriented. And so uh, what we do is provide a suite of uh, tools that, that allow you to do that. And uh, again, part of our company's heritage and a lot of uh, what I'll showcase as examples on Participate is in the realm of global education. So for 30 years, uh, Participate has uh, partnered with schools across the country uh, and, and, and uh, largely in North Carolina where the company is based to bring educators from all over the world into classrooms uh, uh, to, to, to teach, to share global competencies, to be involved in uh, dual language programs and uh, what we've done uh, over the years and over the decades is also uh, develop programs uh, to help schools, regardless of whether or not they have uh, participate teachers, uh, teach global competency skills and uh, dual language skills. And so uh, while we're a professional development company for all uh, all disciplines and all types, uh, we definitely have a large uh, heritage in, in, in global learning. So what I'm going to do here now is change to uh, a live demo of the service. I'm going to go to application service. It says share desktop. I don't yet see my browser, but my browser is now up and there we go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to press share, and I'm going to trust that if you can't see what I'm seeing, uh, someone will sure, certainly let me know. So uh, what I'm showing you here right now is a dashboard that anyone who signs up for participate.com uh, can see. And this is a really good snapshot of uh, a few of the features that I'm going to dive into more uh, extensively. Some of them we talked about uh, a year ago, uh, whether that's collections and certainly chats uh, that, that most uh, folks have, have heard about us. But what I'd like to do is, is quickly review uh, those components while also illustrating and showcasing and sharing how they're incorporated into online courses and more uh, formal professional development, uh, peer review programs, and ultimately ways that uh, educators and administrators can track 
and showcase their own work throughout the platform. So um, like any uh, social network and platform, we obviously have a, uh, uh, a tool where you can, we can uh, kind of see who you are, provide a bio, provide links. Um, here we're showcasing collections, badges, and courses. Uh, that that you um, have done on uh, the platform. I'll, I'll dive into courses uh, momentarily. Here's an example of a course we do uh, in collaboration with the uh, EdCamp movement and, and various EdCamp organizers all over the country. And I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the structure of that uh, uh, momentarily, uh, as well as uh, collections that we've we've talked about. Uh, in recent years, and you know, you think about a collection as a uh, kind of a Pinterest board for uh, educational sharing, where where you could take resources that you find to participate, you find uh, elsewhere online, or you upload uh, as files and create uh, workspaces where you and, and other collaborators can can really discuss uh, uh, resources that uh, are um, uh, relevant to, to your classroom, uh, to your learning. Uh, chats, I'm going to dive into a little bit more, but uh, many of you know that uh, what we show and showcase is uh, hundreds upon hundreds of uh, educator chats. And uh, here's a calendar. Uh, you know, even chats this morning, and, and um, we're, we're also, I think, showcasing all of the um, resources that are shared uh, this morning at Live Classroom uh, as well. So anytime someone tweets uh, uh, hashtag uh, Live Classroom, we'll be, we'll be aggregating those tweets as well. So let me now uh, show you how all of this comes together while giving you an idea of the professional development course structure. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to illustrate some of these curation and collaboration tools within the flow of this course called Participate in Your Own PD. And um, you know, anyone could, could, could come and, and take this course. And, and what we're doing here is it could be a little meta. It's a, it's, a, it's a course teaching people how to uh, uh, learn from this collaborative style of, of professional development. So uh, it's a good uh, showcase of our values as well as how we structure uh, PD. So uh, we, we, we use uh, uh, an inquiry-based process, remember, uh, participatory professional development where uh, our courses are about the investigation process and through that process of discovery and learning and, and uh, you know, we have various checkpoints uh, where you can document what you've learned in order to then synthesize those lessons and, and you know, thoughtfully uh, uh, figure out how to uh, incorporate those elements uh, into your instruction and ultimately uh, show and demonstrate student impact from those lessons. And so if you think of a, a theory of action uh, that, that we use, and I'll get to course, uh, uh, course creators and third parties and uh, no one's beholden to to use this uh, theory of action, but but our approach on this platform is such that teacher learning impacts classroom practice, impacts student learning. So I'll say it again: teacher learning impacts classroom practice, impacts student learning. And so our mindset throughout courses that that we publish here at Participate and that other um, uh, schools and districts um, that, that, that we partner with uh, use this style to reorganize and rethink uh, a lot of their own uh, professional development programs. And so as you see here, one of the elements here is uh, creating a 
collection. Uh, so I, I spoke and, and showcased briefly what a collection uh, looks like. Now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how one could create a collection uh, using uh, the Participate platform. So I'm here, I'm going to New Collection, and I'm going to go Classroom 2.0 Type <laughs> Live Demo. And put Save. And now this is the beginning of my workspace. So what I can do here at the onset is think through. Let's say that I am um, planning a class on uh, or, or a lesson on using Minecraft in the classroom for digital citizenship or, or whatever the case may be. First of all, as I'm working on this, I want to designate visibility. So like Google, uh, YouTube. You could make it so something's public, anyone with a link can view, only I can view. Um, you know, and as you're working on it, you could, you could modify those, those settings along the way. You can add tags for discoverability within your uh, professional learning community school uh, district. And you can uh, enter a description. So this is a lesson on Minecraft. And your tags might be Minecraft, Middle School, Digital, citizenship, as an example. So now what I want to do is uh, I might have a few resources in mind that I want to use. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is click Add Resource, go, in this case, I'm showing a link from iTunes App Store for the, the Minecraft Pocket Edition. I'm going to add a resource, add a link, and boom. Here it is uh, with, with uh, all of the screenshots and metadata. Now, Minecraft knows it's incredibly popular, but if I wanted to use my own description, uh, maybe uh, start with this or Android PC version. I can make my own description that shows up uh, here. I can edit the resource and provide more extensive information uh, for grade levels. Uh, I, could, I could add additional tags, uh, spatial reasoning, mathematics, uh, all, all the different ways one might be able to use uh, Minecraft in, in the classroom. I could submit. Uh, let's say I also have a video about connecting classroom mode for Minecraft. I add that resource. So anything that's URL accessible, uh, you can do similar to Pinterest and LiveBinder and, 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 and a lot of other uh, uh, platforms, uh, curation tools, um, but other things that we bring to the table, you know, you can upload a file, so that could be a lesson plan or a movie or a video associated with what you are uh, uh, teaching about. You can also search for resources within our own database. So every time a collection is made at Participate, or uh, we, we, from time to time, hire expert reviewers to do deep evaluations. And uh, we're also tracking things that come from Twitter. So here are you know, examples of, here's Minecraft. And so I've already uh, had the pocket edition. But if, if I didn't, you know, I would have uh, access to uh, reviews, uh, evaluation rubric, other tags, uh, and in this case, a, a principal in Indiana talking about how he uh, uh, advises uh, Minecraft in class. And you can also see collections from other uh, individuals and say, ooh, Spencer Riley has a pretty extensive collection of uh, lesson plans, teaching, uh, ancillary resources for using Minecraft. You know what? I want to, I want to actually click these, save them, add them, and then I can go back and at a later point in time, I can view all of those. I could at any point alter the order. I can delete something. And I think pretty powerfully, 
I can also now invite at any point uh, others in to, there's Peggy. Uh, so if you're on the platform, I can invite you. There. Please help with suggestions to collaborate on something. If they're not already on Participate, a simple uh, email similar to how you would invite someone with a Google Doc. And then Peggy or others who I invite in to here can, can add their own resources. You can you could have a, a, a small work session. It can be done at conferences with dozens of people. And you can also have private conversations that only those invited to the collection can see. So uh, I put Peggy on the spot. She probably didn't know I'd be inviting her. Uh, but uh, uh, if she gets this, you might see uh, her, her correspondence and other correspondences. Uh, and then along the way, you can also very easily share uh, via email, embedding into a blog or a learning management system, uh, uh, collections. and um, I can also subscribe to a collection. So if I want to have updates on new resources added, that's another piece of what we do. So uh, there's the collection component. Well, let's go back to the course. So now think about, think about the, the, the participatory structure of, uh, of a course where, OK, not only am I learning, I'm, I'm not necessarily taking a, a test, and, and I'm not just writing my reflections, but now I'm I'm, I'm taking resources around a particular subject, a particular discipline, and then I'm describing how I might use that in the classroom. Uh, chats is another component. So I showed you collaboration uh, within a collection. As many of us know, I think it was 60% of us on the, on the, on the poll, uh, Twitter, for better and worse, is a um, great way to connect to your professional learning community. Uh, the great thing about it is there are hundreds of thousands of us on Twitter. So, you know, as we know, as we show here, there are, there are, there are chats associated with uh, grade levels, like, like one of our favorites, fourth chat. And uh, regions, disciplines. Uh, here is a chat on using Minecraft in the classroom. So what I'm showing here is a, is a page specific to participate that takes all of the conversations um, occurring on Twitter, but I'll use a techie term, remediating them for uh, an educator-oriented uh, uh, atmosphere, meaning that right now all you're seeing on this page is uh, things associated with the hashtag Minecraft EDU. Uh, but this is a client. So uh, at any point, if I wanted to participate in a Minecraft EDU chat, I'm down here. One of the benefits is we'll automatically add the hashtag uh, in terms of um, uh, you know, anything that you see and tweet. You can do everything else. Me as a moderator have these other tools where I can flag spam or ban a user. And what I'm doing uh, here is seeing resources that were shared in uh, Minecraft, and I can drop that into any collection that I made. Uh, so what I'm doing at this point is taking uh, resources that were um, shared publicly during a chat and including them in something uh, that I um, want to want to go back to and learn from. Uh, a few other things that we do, upcoming chats for Minecraft. You can see how many participants over a period of time, who the moderators are. And then we automatically generate uh, transcripts based on, on, on every chat on our system. And these are uh, not only uh, Schools, uh, not only chats, but schools and districts also have their own chat environment set up. So you can do a few things here. Uh, when I say remediating the conversation, we can, we can alter the order of the conversation of a Twitter chat. So most people might uh, initially use Twitter.com or TweetDeck or a client and 
you know, there's the structure of a chat where there's a, a moderator says something like Q1 or question one, and then you see all the associated answers, A1 question one. What we do is automatically allow for a chat to be uh, presented in sequential question and answer order. You can still use things chronologically and see all the introductions and everything else. And this happens live or during a transcript, but particularly a transcript that you might want to share internally uh, within your school or everything else. Like, here are all the participants. So if someone wants to see who is there, you could do that here. If you want to just get into the flow and, and understand how can we use games like Minecraft, to get schools engaged and interested in their own learning and see how educators around the, 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 the country, around the world are doing that, we, we try to make that really easy, really accessible. And we also crowdsource a uh, collection of resources based on uh, you know, all of the different uh, apps, videos, websites that were tweeted alongside Minecraft EDU, in this case, on February 21st, between 7 and 8 o'clock. Uh, you know, we can do this uh, for, you know, a lot of our, uh, you know, the, 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 the schools and the districts that uh, uh, use us for uh, uh, global education and dual learning, you know, LangChat is a very uh, popular uh, a, a chat as well. And so uh, what we're doing here is we're incorporating uh, really vibrant discussions and conversations and resources shared uh, publicly and, and giving tools and resources to uh, take those conversations and isolate the real meaningful uh, collaboration and, and resource exchange so you can then again incorporate that either participating in a chat or uh, seeing a collection generated from a chat and really taking these resources that, you know, so many of us are like, oh, that was a great chat, but how do I get back to it? We try to give you a place to not only automatically curate them for you, but then give you a workspace to say, well, I, I um, started using digital citizenship and I saw this great um, uh, uh, exemplar on YouTube and I saw a, a lesson plan uh, by uh, Spencer Riley and here's now how I'm doing it and here's my reflection and here are other resources that I'm finding. And so, uh, again, investigation, uh, synthesis and reflection and what I'm going to do now, and, and I told you and showed you how to uh, invite collaborators. And so we talked at the onset about the, the, the badging uh, component, uh, where, where, you know, how are badges, uh, how should badges be used uh, within professional development? And, you know, completing a course like this will allow you to submit a collection and a reflection and, uh, at the onset, what I'm going to do is show you an example of a badge that could be uh, generated. Here's one on, on course design uh, where here's what I've done. Here are the different things that I've, I've used. Uh, here's a collection that basically shows um, what I've done for course design and those annotations and other things. Uh, uh, you know, are, are part of my learning experience. Here's, here's the outline to a course, and here's a very brief <laughs> reflection I use to illustrate kind of what you do uh, uh, to earn a badge. And um, what, we, what, we, what we have structured is a way now through online courses uh, and then the micro-credentialing, so you can envision a world now where going to an ed camp uh, generates a badge. And this badge, uh, depending on your school, district, or partnerships that, that, that we have, you can get PD for going to the camp and, and taking a course alongside that camp. Now, our badging structure uh, has a, a, a number of different paths. Uh, there could be uh, badges upon completion or badges based on competency. So what I'm showing you here is a tool 
that allows third parties, administrators, uh, peers to actually dive in more uh, specifically to see, okay, this document was uploaded. Let me see exactly what was done, and I can I can hit that link. I can I can basically decide whether or not the work submitted through this platform, in this case a badge was awarded, but here is a peer review uh, uh, lens that, that says, okay, I'm only going to assign a badge or credit once uh, a third party or a peer reviewer deems that uh, a competency has been achieved. And then for schools and districts who use the platform, uh, you get great uh, reporting mechanism. So, you know, if you want to look at a horizontal 360 degree view of, you know, a school on our platform uh, using uh, professional development and then view individually to uh, individuals kind of like what you've seen on the profile, what, I've, what I showed on my profile, not only course completion but collections made, um, badges earned, uh, you can now see how things that we talked about a year ago in terms of um, uh, professional development are now incorporated into all of these different courses. And I'm going to show you a pretty extensive list here of courses that uh, schools and districts, as you can see, there's a considerable amount of global education uh, courses that we work, uh, work with. Uh, but more recently, third parties like uh, Convergence Design Labs have uh, developed courses and uh, we create courses like Participate in Your Own PD and others. You can just see um, uh, a lot of the, this is now a, an admin view of a lot of, of basically all of the courses that we have available. If you want to see separately a marketplace of courses that are now any third party um, could now come to us and say, you know, this, uh, my, my name, my identity is a course that launched this week. Uh, out of the Santa Clara Office of Education where, um, you know, they want to create a course uh, associated with uh, the, the names and pronunciations of, of students and how that uh, really promotes uh, respect and awareness and cultural empathy through, throughout a school, throughout a place. And here's a way I can sign up for a course for free and there we go. Anyone can take this right now and participate, as well as other courses that, um, you know, a marketplace, P21 is a partner of ours uh, uh, with courses around the four C's, EdCamp, as I mentioned, and increasingly now third parties are uh, creating courses that anyone could use and then uh, on, a, on, a, on a private basis or um, on an enterprise basis. Uh, schools, districts, and other educational organizations are creating their own PD or licensing our global uh, PD and some of our other programs that take advantage of a, of a lot of these different competencies. Finally, uh, I want to show you a way for, you know, just, just give you an idea of how we're integrating these elements. And so you and your peers and your schools and your districts can use the platform to create their own professional development courses through Participate. So uh, it's a quick, uh, this is called our course creator, uh, where you can see, you know, a really elegant, rich text editor where you can start doing content blocks of your lesson and, and begin creating a course uh, either taking an existing course and putting it on the platform or taking a course where you want to incorporate videos, you want to have a series of interactions uh, to say you know, like a checkpoint like the collection in the chat that I told you about, and, or if you want to embed a, a collection like what we've done. And so, you know, if I want to say that this Minecraft EDU uh, collection now should be part of the course, I can do that. So. There's, uh, there's probably a million and a half other things that I'd love to share and showcase with you, but um, I, I really, really look forward to hearing um, uh, and, and, and learning from all of you on the, on the webinar this morning, and I, I would open it up to questions at this point.
Okay, I did have to log out and come back in, so I will start with the list that I have. Uh, do you like the whole badges thing? Um, in some cases, this person says she's got a friend who's an adjunct at a, at a local college and that they didn't work out for this particular person. Maybe not the adjunct, but the, the person writing the question. So do badges always work? I, I think we're at a, you know, kind of a, still somewhat of an early stage in, in the badges. I mean, I think, um, I think electricity didn't always work uh, uh, at the onset and, and Ben Franklin, like some, some might, uh, some might not. I, I think it's, it's not the badge, whether or not a badge works. I think it's how it's incorporated mm -hmm. into, um, you know, how it's thoughtfully incorporated into a professional development program. So there could certainly be cases of uh, badges uh, not not working or not being optimal. But I don't. I, I wouldn't look at it as a unit of its own right. Mm -hmm. I would look at it as a way to acknowledge and showcase what you're learning, and then sharing what you're learning attached to the 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 the, the evidence as um, you know, a really powerful um, part of the professional development experience. So um, I, would, I, would, I would certainly be patient and uh, give it, give it uh, another um, shot. Sure. And so I'm, I'm looking at some of the chats in, in, on here, and it's great to hear um, all of this. I mean, if, if, there's, if there's any particular component of what I shared this morning that you'd love to learn more about, uh, I can dive in further. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there are any uh, questions asked earlier uh, that, that you noticed, uh, please let me know as I'm scrolling uh, through and, and trying to capture those. Yeah, I do have some other questions here. Uh, does this save a cached page of something, or do you have to add that you have added as a resource? Let's see. So a cached page, like a like a, a website, like a meaning, are you able to to view it offline? Is that? Um, I mean, it 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 can save a cached page. It can save uh, certainly a document that you mm -hmm. upload. Uh, ultimately, the platform's more um, beneficial if you're if you're connected. Um, but but yeah, we're we're able to ingest and incorporate a variety of different uh, links and, and file mm -hmm. types, uh, including cache. Okay. Uh, what I think there was an extension to the question. Um, mm -hmm. So at the time that it's posted. That would be more uh, how I how I still see that is uh, examples of that are are taking a screenshot of that page and then mm -hmm. and then uh, uploading that screenshot as a fixed example of how something looked at the current time uh, is the most practical uh, way of, of incorporating that into the collection. Okay. Can someone ask to be invited to become a contributor to a collection? Yes, so, so you can subscribe to a collection. And uh, by subscribing, the collection creator um, can, uh, can invite you to that collection. Uh, it's certainly, uh, certainly in, in the near future, the ability to overtly ask to be uh, uh, invited is is something that that we've heard and something that we will enable. But it, it, for the meantime, uh, uh, subscribing to a collection uh, very often generates an invitation from the collection creator. Okay, here's a little clarification on the cached page question. Uh, she was asking, what if the page is no longer available at a later date? 
will the cached page still be available? So, so again, the um, if the page is no longer available at a later date, my suggestion at the onset would be to create a screenshot. Um, if not, we would if if you're if you're if you're creating a collection uh, and you're trying to get something that had previously existed, uh, it, it it would be about if, if there's a way of finding that um, link with the older information. You know, I know I know Wayback Machine has technologies like that. <laughs> I'll have to investigate further. That's that's frankly a new. Um, Something that that we haven't seen before. So, let, okay. aside from the screenshot, um, let me. I, I'd be happy to circulate and tweet out and share with the group uh, more specific information related to that. Okay. And Paula's been waiting patiently with her hand raised. Um, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and give Paula the mic. And I have some other questions that I've gathered here. Great. Hi, Brad. It's so great to hear you uh, on our show this week. Um, as you know, as a fourth chat moderator, we were one of the first chats that I think um, you got us going on your platform, and we have definitely loved being a part of it. it makes it so easy to um, share our archive chats out with our friends that um, maybe we're not able to you know, be there uh, live, and the resources are wonderful. I would like to know a couple of things. One, um, what are your terms of service as far as students, what age group, et cetera? And then as um, a teacher, if we create, can we create a course? Like I'm thinking of doing something along the lines of digital citizenship for my fourth graders and was wondering if I would have that capability on participate. Sure thing. Well, Paula, thank you so much for the for the kind words. Yes, you were in November of 2015, one of the pioneers, and um, I was just in uh, New Orleans a week or two ago, and thinking of you in that town for many many reasons puts a smile on my face. So the two questions of um, uh, terms of service. I mean, think and and, and uh, like we're. There's obviously links to our terms of service and, and, um, and kind of kind of the more formal um, uh, description. I mean, we look at this as an adult learning platform. So uh, teachers, educators, and this is this is a platform certainly for teachers uh, and adult educators to share resources with one another. Um, you know, our terms of service is is pretty. Uh, uh, universal in terms of other platforms and social media, and you know, by all means, uh, you know, later middle school, uh, high school, um, you know, this is um, in, in many ways uh, a platform used to to also for educators to share with their students. But uh, the intent, the structure, is um, uh, online professional development and learning. Now, the second part of your question in terms of course creation. So the last part of my demo when I entered the studio element, yes, for certain uh, there is a way to create courses on Participate and we would absolutely love to work with you and anyone on, on this webinar on doing that. That's why we're here. Um, so I showed a brief 90 second um, uh, view of how to do that, but at any point in time, I would love uh, as well as uh, bring our instructional design team uh, with you to not only show you how it works, but share some of our best practices in terms of how to, how to create courses on the platform. That would be awesome, and I will definitely be in touch, Brad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. Can you find resources that have been vetted by a particular reviewer, such as Monica Burns? Is there a way to search by reviewer? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Monica, <laughs> Monica is a longtime uh, expert uh, collaborator. 
of participate uh, and and you can see uh, uh, when you can you could you could see in search remember when I showed you under collaboration and other ways to uh, find individuals like Monica you could see uh, the collections of resources that she has made and then when you search for resources uh, you can also uh, see uh, the individual or multiple reviewers uh, of those resources. So Monica in particular has probably reviewed thousand plus mm -hmm. uh, K through five uh, iOS uh, Android uh, applications. Uh, so there, there, there's a few different ways to see uh, who the reviewer is of um, a given uh, resource and as well as looking at their profile page to get an idea of all the collections that they've created and all the associated resources within those collections. Great. Is, I guess this is for adult learning, so um, somebody asked, is there a category for adult education? teachers. I only see grades pre-K to 12 in categories. So I guess 13 plus is a question. So adult education, so if you think about what we're doing, uh, I mean I think I think the, the, the courses themselves, uh, whether it's participate in your own PD uh, or a lot of the global education, I mean, those, these are, these are um, you know, in terms of our course structure and the collaboration and chats, that's all about, uh, we think adult education is predicated on those components. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about searching for resources, applications, videos, websites, uh, etc., cetera, um, the, the vast majority of our library uh, are, you know, in those cases, uh, resources that adult educators should use in their classroom, as well as other articles and uh, presentations and videos uh, where teachers can share with other teachers what they're doing. But um, I'm, ho I'm hopeful uh, if that answers your question that there's a few different ways, but a lot of our, a lot of our resource library is specific to how teachers can use tools for pre-K through 12. Okay. Peggy asked, could you demonstrate how to do that search or searches for uh, Monica Burns vetted resources, just as sure. an example, so people know how to do that? By all means. Let me go to application sharing. I'm going to go here. And that's for Monica Burns as a reviewer. As a reviewer. So, uh, I'm going to see. I know that Monica has done a bunch of here. So, there are a few different ways to get to Monica, uh, right? And so, here what you see are her collections. And you can see, in Monica's case, you know, she has 50 different collections from everything from ecosystem units to augmented reality to fourth grade literary, however. Uh, soon we'll have it, so we'll have like a, a more specific way to get to reviewers. Right now, we're more context and um, uh, subject based. So, um, meaning that, you know, if, if, you're, if you're looking for a particular keyword like what I did here with fractions, you're going to see a bunch of different uh, reviewers, whether it's Monica or Spencer or uh, others. Uh, and our tools are structured so it's keyword oriented, it's content type platform, and then you can, of course, browse uh, by all of these elements in Common Core. So, in answer to your question, it's probably probably involves a an additional step to find the actual individual. But if you know someone's on here, uh, you could find them that way, and then see all the collections that they've made. 
but the 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 more specific viewer search Peggy that you're talking about uh, is in the works, but for a variety of reasons, um, we're 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 structuring this as more uh, keyword and subject based rather than individual based at this point. Okay. If you flag something as spam in a Twitter feed, what happens to it in Participate? Does it get removed? So it doesn't automatically get removed in Participate. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I showed you earlier, Participate has a way of flagging for spam and um, uh, blocking users. Here, so this is the collaborative PD chat. This is, by the way, a chat that we do once a month uh, with Jen Williams on a lot of these issues that we're talking about. So uh, we don't inherit the um, flag spam from Twitter, but if you're in here and you see something, this will make it go bye bye. And then, more importantly, like for for a lot of popular spam, uh, uh, like chat chat or uh, Ed chat, you know, where you just kind of get recurring users or whatever. What this will do, this ban user, is make it so nothing from that user ever appears in this page again, or really any other page. Uh, so, um, uh, that I hope that addresses uh, your question. Mhm. Mm I think it does. Awesome. Oh, here's one about Ed Camp. How would educators use participate on the actual day of an ed camp by starting a collection or just by using the Twitter hashtag? So a few different things. Um, as I mentioned, uh, in addition to every uh, course, I'm sorry, every chat, uh, we have essentially every ed camp indexed. And so what we do here. And now increasingly EdCamp organizers know. And so in this case, EdCamp Miami, which took place last November, they have an EdCamp. Everything that's being shared is now captured. Yeah, everything that's, that's, that's being tweeted around EdCamp Miami is now captured. And so if you want a quick index of the resources that were shared in that day, you can just go here into you know, view full resource collection. Uh, so we're we're again archiving and aggregating all of the different resources and conversations, and so you could see, you know, in many ways a back channel, like you're on site, but but the conversations are of course also taking place uh, on Twitter, and then during the during the actual uh, uh, ed camp, again we recommend and we've developed a course in concert with. Uh, at camps where you could kind of you know you could use these different checkpoints and say okay I'm 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 at the ed camp and you know I'm in the session and I heard this great uh, coding tool and I want to go ahead and create a collection around that and other things that I'm learning uh, and so these are these are some of the early examples of what you can do with an ed camp you know again curating and archiving what was seen and heard and then giving you a workspace to Personalize your own experience and document what you've learned throughout the day. Great. Uh, so this is an extension of that question. So if we organize an ed camp, we should add it to participate. Uh, most certainly. So we'll uh, we're pretty proactive about making sure that the ed camp is on participate. But mm -hmm. what we what we found is um, you know we have a toolkit um, and, and way to help. Promote this course mm -hmm. to anyone um, uh, attending your ed camp, and uh, oftentimes, you know, if, if it's a school or a district, uh, uh, it, it's very helpful. You know, if your school or district uh, provides a certificate or credit, uh, this is a great way to to really document and showcase what you do. So, uh, an answer to your question, like. If you don't see our if you don't see your ed camp on our calendar or when you're planning one, by all means, go here to chats, and um, uh, you can find it that way. What I'm showing you here now is our intercom, 
And so this is a great way to just say, hey, I want to um, please add Ed Camp X on X date. Our team will be very responsive and they'll follow up with some information maybe on uh, who the organizer is, uh, other details that you want to share. And that's, that's a great way of doing that or really asking us anything um, about participate, questions that you have, issues that you find, et cetera. We're extremely responsive in that regard. Terrific. Those were the questions I was able to capture and with the help of Tammy, capture some of them when I was out. Um, any other questions for Brad? You can type in the chat or um, if you'd like to get on the mic, we can let you have the mic as well. Okay, I think I'm going to turn the show over to Peggy, who will, I think, tell us about our upcoming shows. I definitely will do that. I'm trying to find a slide. We got Brad went back to an earlier slide, and I wasn't quite sure what number it was. So thank you so much, Brad. I'm so excited about the new features, and I already know I have to go back and listen to this recording again so that I can catch the things I missed while I was working behind the scenes there. But we are very excited about participate and all of the wonderful ways it allows us to connect and collaborate with other educators. So that's awesome. I do want to remind everyone we try to have a show every Saturday, but next week is one of our exceptions. We won't have a show because the Global Student Technology Conference is going on that day, and we would love for you to participate in that. That is one of Steve Hargadon's free virtual conferences, and the link is in the live binder. It's going to focus on STEM and entrepreneurship, and it's all um, presentations by students. So I know that you're going to enjoy participating in that. The following week, March 11th, Jennifer Wagner will be back with us sharing all of her latest updates about projects by Jen and also about not at ISTE. So we're really looking forward to getting caught up with her. March 18th, we're going to be sharing a new parent communication tool called Blooms. March 25th, we have an awesome featured teacher, Ken Ehrman, who happens to be a fifth grade teacher. April 1st, Desiree Alexander is coming back to do a special show on creating video. And she's calling it Not Your Grandmother's Video. And then on April 8th, Adam Bello is going to be joining us to share all about Breakout EDU. If you haven't discovered that yet, you're going to be very excited once you hear about that. So uh, just to show you, um, the Learning Revolution link and our closing slides. Lori, go ahead and take us out. Thanks, Peggy. Learning Revolution is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. So you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session, and as long as your session is public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link or from the tab in the Live Finder in Resources. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. The video collections on iTunes U and the link is in the Resources section as well. When you exit, your browser should open the link for the survey or you can take the link from chat. It's also in the Live Binder in that Resources tab. As you complete the survey, you can also request a professional development certificate. Your name prints out on their certificate thanks to Patty Ruffing, and she also sends them out. 
make sure you have this sent to a personal email address rather than the school. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to Brad Spearson, our special guest, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.